Hi, everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Nalo's Thrift Talk. I'm Lola. And I'm Nay. And this is a weekly YouTube show where we talk about our love of thrifting and how we enjoy finding old forgotten things in thrift stores and giving them a new life and new value and doing that to create a sustainable lifestyle and also as a way that we make some money by selling our finds on Poshmark, eBay, Depop, and different resale platforms around the internet. Yes. Anything you want to add to that, Nay? No, that was a good intro. <laughs> And today we are going to be talking about work from home fashion. So it's kind of an interesting topic for us because neither of us generally work in an office, even in non-pandemic times. So we're always kind of on the outside looking in. At least that's how I feel when I see my friends who work full time in sort of normal nine to five jobs posting about their fashion, their wardrobe, what they buy, where they shop. But of course, as resellers, a lot of our customers, of course, have that, you know, more traditional lifestyle. And it's changed a lot in the past few months yeah. because of the shift to working from home. So yeah. I'm fascinated by what's going to stay the same, what's going to change, you know, what's temporary and what's permanent, how our um, shopping habits are going to change and our customer shopping habits are going to change. So we're digging into a little bit of that today and then also just looking at like fun, comfy work from home fashion. So we'll have some bolo brands and styles to talk about and uh, a little bit of that sort of analysis of the data and, and see how the overall shopping trends might affect us as resellers. Yes. And I have to say, I did work from home for a while. I did. Oh, right, of course. Well, I had a nine to five job and my company was bought out by a company in Texas. And I was one of the few surviving employees um, in uh, Pennsylvania at the time. So I did work in, we had a small satellite office and I would go in like once a week, but I worked from home mainly and I did have calls and um, I did have to, you know, pull some things together, you know, to, to look presentable. So uh, I do have that experience. And now I'm working from home. I'm doing a lot of freelance work. And sometimes I do have to do Zoom calls, but it's really informal. Like graphic designers, like in my field, we're pretty like laid back. A lot of the graphic design offices, not the not the corporate office I worked in, but the graphic design, I had a graphic design job before that. And we were allowed to wear jeans or whatever, you know. So a lot of, a lot, in my profession, a lot of people are kind of more laid back, but I do have, professional meeting sometimes, you know, where I have to talk to people and, you know, you do want to look presentable. Plus I think that although it's nice to be in loungy clothes and all to shower and get dressed in the morning, kind of, I think gets you yes. a little more productive. So yes, it's so helpful to have that routine. I totally yeah, agree. I feel like, you know, this is, I'm at my job and I need to, yeah. It's, yeah. I did. I, I worked full time in an office job for about a year and, um, I would work from home one day a week. And those days I would basically roll out of bed and maybe put on like a different pair of sweatpants and just sit in, because I never had to do like Zoom calls. So it didn't matter. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so it depends on what you have to do. Yeah. But for the most part, you need to, you know, a lot of people are Zooming these days and you need to be, um, to have some things ready on the fly. So we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. okay. Totally. Okay, and next week we do have a fun episode coming up. Um, we both did a little bit of sourcing online, so we are going to do a online source thrift haul. It's been a long time since we did a thrift haul. Neither of us have really been back to a thrift store. So no, I haven't. No, I ha either. yeah, okay, I haven't either. I know that you have. I think in New Jersey you're a little bit. We're a little bit open, but I'm still not going yeah. to thrift stores. I just don't feel comfortable. Same here. So we've been getting creative. We've talked about that before in previous episodes. So this yeah. is some of what we ended up buying. And also we're going to talk about what we didn't buy and how online sourcing allows you to check comps right from your computer or your phone while you're searching for stuff. So that'll. I yeah. Think that'll and I scored a couple. I don't know. If, I think I'll have it in time for next week, but I scored something really pretty really amazing. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And it was kind of in an obscure place. And I'm, I sourced from a different, a new um, site and 
it was it's surprisingly amazing and and it doesn't look like much when you go into the site like you would think that it's eh, you know it's a little sketchy but it's surprisingly good so i'll tell you what source that is and some of the things i found from there just like in real life thrift stores sometimes the ones are like mm, it's a little yeah, sketchy this, <laughs> Yeah, and this is kind of the same way. So I'll talk about that. So stay tuned next week, next Friday, 9 11, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And yeah. my my little um my little chat here about my I'm doing I'm offering a special offer for packages for online sellers to get your store or your business. If you have your own online site too, I can do stuff for that. But basically I'm doing store logos, banners, business cards, package inserts, stickers, Facebook banners, Etsy banners, Poshmark uh, design, you know, anything you need, I can do because I am a professional graphic designer and I have things, I have uh, three packages at three different price points, but I can customize the packages and add a la carte items. So talk to me if you know you have special needs. But if you buy one package, you'll get the second one 25% off. So if you have an eBay store and you want to get your Etsy store design too, now is the time to do it all in one swoop. And I am at N Shearstone Designs or NS Designs on Facebook. I have a business page. So like my business page and come on over and uh, you can comment. I have a post there about this. You can comment on the post. You can PM me. You can, there's an email address on my uh, Facebook page, you know, many ways to get in touch with me. So if you're interested, let me know. Awesome. And your work of course is fantastic and you can see it every week on our show. All of the segment images and stuff like that is all of Nay's work. So mm -hmm. yes, good little example of what she can do. Okay. And um, so Jason in the chat asked, is it scarf day? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's, it's actually, we're gonna talk about what why. are you wearing that's thrifted? Okay, so here is my whole ensemble. So I have on, these are vintage 80s sterling silver earrings oh, that I could get. Them. I got them in a lot of sterling silver earrings from shopgoodwill.com. I got the whole lot for six ninety nine. Wow! I know. Like sometimes, and I find I'm going a little later at night, and a lot of times they do cut off their items. That, but I'm finding that you know there's things that are missed. So um, we'll talk a little bit about that next week. So I do have this vintage scarf. It is actually silk. It's made in Japan. It's got this awesome uh, tag. It's hand rolled. Um, rayon and you can see the the vintage tag there love it oh that's so pretty yeah it is made in japan so it's really pretty i don't know where i got this at a thrift store somewhere probably paid like a buck for it might have been at circle thrift in philly and then i have on this blazer that came in a blue box a goodwill blue box and you know it's it's kind of a fitted blazer but if i'm working from home and i have a zoom call i'm gonna want to throw something on to cover over <laughs> the fact that you're just in a t-shirt that I'm actually in my pajamas so I might want to grab you know I'm in my loungy clothes so I might want to so this is I have on the perfect oh my gosh that's so I'm working from home so it's a little oversized I ordered it from eBay this week I thought it was a women's fitted shirt so I ordered an extra large and it's like huge on me but it's comfy so this is the kind of thing that you would work from home in you know, just a comfy t-shirt. Yeah, and then I have on, I have on just sweatpants. Yeah. So, um, you know, so if I had a Zoom call, I could throw on the scarf, throw on the, you know, I have the earrings to accessorize, throw on the blazer, and it, you would never know that I have a frumpy t-shirt and sweatpants on. So I also have my mannequin, my mannequin dress for work from home. So she is wearing... Um, she's wearing a cardigan. This is another thing that we'll talk about. You can do long cardigans, especially like dusters. So this is, and this is all for sale in my, in my, <laughs> so if you see anything, you're like, this is a, a Harvey uh, Bernard a, a scarf, the, um, a vintage one. So, so she's got that on, but she's actually wearing underneath it all a New York Yankee shirt and um, BC, these are vintage BCBG um, uh, uh, pants. Oh, um, are those like the they're like, velour, they're like, like track suit? They're like terry cloth, yeah. So these are like vintage from the 90s, you know. 
And I do have these up in my Poshmark store. So if anybody's interested, they're so soft. It's and so these actually did come in a in a blue box too. So, um, but she's wearing that and she's got that on. But you wouldn't know, you know, when she when she puts the cardigan on and the scarf, she's ready for her Zoom call. Totally. Is that yeah. shirt from Old Navy by any chance? No, it is um an actual licensed um um football okay because they do have nfl licensed shirts oh, okay. and well, it's, it's, yeah no it's so similar I'm, but it's the patriots and i was wearing it yesterday so they're just okay funny. i did thrift it i thrifted it in one of my thrift stores in the new york city region you know here because that's our team here but i'm still a loyal eagles fan of course i would never doubt you um so my scarf is actually the only thing that i'm wearing that was not thrifted um but of course it's the thing that's the most like in your face. But this um, is a scarf that my mom got me from Egypt actually. And I had ha I've had it hanging in my closet. And since I don't really dress up that much anymore, I haven't had a chance to pull it on, but I noticed it kind of matched the orange in this duster, as you were talking about that it was thrifted. I got this um, from, let's see, let's see. The length on it. it has this really nice, like, um, like a crepe rayon kind of texture. Ooh. You can see it on the, um, but it's it's just from Forever Twenty One, and I got it in a blue box that I think I unboxed on one of our blue box episodes. We're both so, wearing blue box uh, items. Yeah, and it's one of those examples of something that I actually don't even know if I would have looked that closely at it in the thrift store. Yeah. Um, so it was fun to get that in a blue box because, it, you know, it's sort of throwing things at you that you might not necessarily gravitate to uh, normally, but it's, you know, really nice piece. It's really nice quality for Forever 21. I would never have guessed unless, you know. Yeah, they do have some surprises. Actually, mm -hmm. I have a little curveball in one of my later in one of our segments from Forever 21 that you'll oh, cool. be a little surprised about. Yeah. Um, and then with that, I'm just wearing a pair of leggings. They're girlfriend collective that I bought on Poshmark. Oh, nice. I've worn these before as well. They're just basic black leggings. One of my favorite staples and I do get them, you know, secondhand on Poshmark. I, I think they're a great deal, but I also am pretty sure the person who is selling them probably got them thrifted for, you know, $5 and I buy them for 15 yeah. or 20. Yeah. So we're both happy and um and that's a great example of one of those staple items i think that we'll talk yes. about so like, yes yeah yeah like kind definitely. of yeah definitely cool. so yeah that's my outfit for today and yeah. i feel so professional i, I haven't dressed yeah. this nicely. Yeah, and that looks great like just the scarf kind of you know, yeah like, this is this is yeah. exactly how i used to dress like when i was in grad school yeah. because I would be sitting working for hours on end, but I also would like go to class and want to look a little professional. So the scarf and like, right. yeah, breezy layers. Perfect. Very cool. And my zoom call ended so I can be in my. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and what is your thrifted home decor? Okay. Item? So I have a few things. I have this, this is, I pulled this out. It was in storage at my parents' house, but I, I was looking at some of my old art or my old art and stuff. I have a fascination. I've always had a fascination with Asian art. I did pick this up at a flea market years ago. Um, probably like in the early 2000s. And I remember buying it at the, it's on part, it's an actual painting on parchment paper. So mm -hmm. um, it's, beautiful. it's, and it is, it's signed. Um, it's, yeah, it's really pretty. So it is, I framed, it's in a frame, but, um, you know, that's something I might hang on my wall here. But so that is one item. And then I also wanted to talk about one thing that people are also using for work from home is blankets, like snuggly blankets and Afghans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think they're selling more now because people are kind of cozying up at home in them. So this is not something that's thrifted, but it's something that you can find at the thrift store. My my dear grandmother made this. I haven't taken it out in years. It sits in the closet in plastic. I took it out of the plastic today for the first time because I don't want to, you know, I don't want it to get hurt or damaged because she is, um, you know, she passed away and she was like, I was really, really close to her. So this is near and dear to my heart. So she crocheted this. And, but you can find, you know, a lot of these in the thrift stores. A lot of blankets, quilts, you know, things like that. And they are selling more now. I know I have a 
quilts up on eBay that I have not had interest in for it's probably been listed for over a year. And now all of a sudden I have watchers and offers on it. So, oh, you know, yeah. so yeah. So just keep that in mind too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, you can, people are kind of snuggling up, you know, when they're working, you know, so yeah. But this will go back in its plastic. <laughs> I just don't want it to get ruined. So this is an item that I've been um, displaying on my bookshelf because it is slightly broken. So it doesn't actually work anymore, but it's this amazing art deco camera. Uh -huh. And when I pulled it off the shelf, I realized yeah. it still has the, uh, I never washed off the price on it. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be Circle Thrift. It, yes. This is from Circle Thrift. Right. Yeah. And, they write on, I know they do that. Yep. Yeah. So this is sort of in, in, line with what you were saying about the uh the blanket there's definitely an uptick in items that are being sold for just home decor people wanting to make their spaces yes. feel a little more special look cool in the back of their zoom so yeah. something like this um i remember looking it up when i first got it and it is you know knowing it's broken but it does have this really cool vintage aesthetic to it, um, especially with the Art Deco face is one keyword that was used a lot for these. So the broken ones still were worth something just for decor. And I think that that's, you know, a market that's going up even more right now. And um, another camera that I was going to research because I need to pare down my collection a little bit. But so this is this feels like the right time to be selling some of these you know, items that may or may not actually function as the original yeah. function, but you're still uh, freezing up a little bit. I'm oh, no. Sure okay. Let me, um, I might have to drop out to okay. fix my Wi Fi. Yeah, you so, might have to do that uh, and then just come right back in because you're, yeah. for some yeah. reason, you're freezing up. I'm but... on the wrong Wi Fi network. So I will be right back. Now I'm gone. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we are going to talk about, um, I think I think the behavior shift with um, let me just get her yeah okay so I think the behavior shift with um, there uh, Lola here okay all right so, <laughs> yeah so I was just talking about the behavior shift with um, with work from home that um, customers are shopping more online now and um, I think they're going to continue doing that after this is over. Mm -hmm. And also uh, a lot of companies are, are, you know, having their employees work from home because of the pandemic, because of being quarantined. And they're realizing that it's actually productive and more efficient and they're saving money. And I think a lot of companies I've heard of, you know, some companies that are now going to do either part or all work from home after the pandemic is over because it's working for them. So I think, you know, this is, you know, kind of uh, even, thank God, COVID won't be here to stay forever. But I think, you know, the work from home, the shift to work from home will be um, something that will continue after the pandemic because because a lot of companies are realizing that, you know, they're, they're saving on electricity and they're saving on, you know, all of, you know, resources and, you know, they're comfortable at home and they're able to get their work done, you know, so... So I think yeah, it's I've definitely you know, something heard, that's here to stay. I've heard in the news different companies saying that they're extending work from home, you know, into far into 2021 already. And like my family members um, who have office jobs are also saying that they um, are basically expecting their new work from home policies to be permanent. And I think the uh, the flip side of that too is that the the open office plan is going to fall out of favor for health reasons and so you have the ability to put fewer people in okay. an office are you back yeah you're am i okay yeah i don't know we've, what's been, going... having... we've been having problems yeah with you're wife. fine okay um yeah okay, so this well. is a really a really interesting uh research study done by mckinsey that um I was reading for this episode. Oh, did you want to pull it? Yeah. Um, so this I'm is trying to share. Yeah, I'm trying. To yeah. So this is some data that kind of backs up what we have been noticing anecdotally that 
people seem to be shopping more online and saying that they are planning to continue to shop more online after traditional retail stores reopen. So this isn't specifically about resale sites. It's about all, you know, all retailers online in all different sectors. And it also includes like uh, food delivery and things like that, that aren't traditional, like retail, like we sell items. Um, but I think that we definitely will feel the effects of this because the, the changes are pretty significant. And um, it was interesting to see also that demographically behavior is a little bit different. So they highlight, and then this was also something I saw in multiple cities that millennials and more wealthy people are the ones who are changing the behavior the most. So that may or may not affect, re, you know, secondhand shopping if it's among the most wealthy, but it could also mean that people are more open to shopping for funky things on eBay and spending more money, you know? So I think that's a little hard to interpret how it would affect us, but I thought that was interesting. And then yeah. the second um, demographic that is really impacted by this is Gen Z, who's already like born online. We talk about that a lot with Depop and stuff. And yeah. In line with our experiences on Depop, the changes that Gen Z is um, is experiencing in terms of shopping online is that they're more dedicated to shopping, clothing, accessories, makeup, things that are forms of self-expression. So, and I think that has a lot to do with the rise of TikTok and the ability to be you know, yourself and express right. yourself without even having to leave the house. So you still have an incentive to dress up in a funky outfit if you're going to show it off on TikTok to your friends, even if you're not going to school in person. So, you know, I thought that was super interesting. And that was included in this McKinsey study and also in a couple other um, different sets of data that I, I browse. But this one was the most interesting and I think comprehensive. So definitely yeah. include a link in our show notes to this so you guys can take a look and um and yeah if you read it and interpret it differently as it might impact us as resellers definitely want to hear your thoughts on it as well yeah definitely um so um oh and then i thought this was an interesting uh, directly from this article that the online spending in non-essential categories is is slower to return which makes sense but it is starting to come back, especially in apparel and footwear. So that directly relates to, yeah. yes. I think, you know, people are maybe starting to see that they know how the financial impact of this pandemic is going to affect them personally. So whether or not their job's affected or not, and if they do have a job and it's not going anywhere, but they know they're working from home for the next 10 months and maybe longer, it's easier to th start thinking about revamping your wardrobe accordingly. So yeah. Right. And it's also easier to shop online when you're working from home because, mm -hmm. you know, you can take a break and, you know, go, you know, and you don't have, uh, you know, your boss like over your shoulder or whatever, you know, so it's, it's easier to shop from home because you can kind of, at least at my job, um, you know, like doing freelance, I do, you know, I can manage my own hours so I can pretty much do what I want when I want, you know, as long as I get the work done. And so if you do a search on eBay for work for, for WFH, work from home. It has become a trending a yeah. acronym like NWT, new with tag. And you can find a lot of listings for, and you'll see a lot of comfy clothes, a lot of, uh, of you know, roomy tunic tops and dresses. And in the men's clothes, it's the same kind of thing. You know, there's a button. Most of the, most of the clothes, but I, I, do, I did see men's clothes too. So, but if you do the uh, search for, for WFH, that is becoming um, a new keyword. So you can add that to your listings and people will search for, are starting to search for that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. When I was looking for um, articles that were talking about this so subject, I would search like WFH, you know, style or something. Yeah. And you know what the top results were actually eBay results. So Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it can also help if you're um, if you're wanting to get um, visibility on Google. Like I definitely was seeing eBay coming up high on the on these Google results. So that was really cool. Yeah. So one thing that we looked at was on Poshmark. They have a trend report that's out every it's every quarter, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. This one just came out on September first, so it's okay. pretty. So recent. 
do. So it's interesting because if you look at this, a lot of this is what we're going to be talking about that what is trending is uh, these, this says brands, departments, um, athletic shorts, sweatshirts and hoodies, hats, polos, mm -hmm. casual button down shirts. It's all stuff that a lot of it is work from home stuff. Um, you know, it's stuff that you can wear. So, so if you look at the, the trends here, um, you can see a lot of, um, you know, casual kind of, there's the, the cardigan that's, you know, the, the kind of oversized cardigan. Um, you can see, um, yeah, you know, the casual layers. And the yeah, so it's interesting yeah. that, uh, the posh, the Poshmark, she's got a, um, a romper on and I'm going to talk about rompers and jumpsuits, uh, you know, casual sweaters, hoodies. And they talk about, you know, some of the home decor items too, and and how that that's trending. People are cooking more, so a lot of you know um, cooking items are selling, and it's interesting though because a lot of tank tops, t-shirts, blouses, leggings, sneakers, all stuff that you can wear, you know, to work from home. So the the, the trends are definitely it's definitely showing here. Stay at home style is all about comfortable and stylish. You know, staples while staying safe at home. From live streaming classes and Zoom meetings to virtual hangouts, it's become a part of our new daily norm. We're in a living in a virtual world. Why, why we've taken a waist up approach to fashion. So you'll notice that a lot too. Tops are trending more, such as tees, tanks, and blouses paired with leggings and sneakers have grown to be a winning combination. Ultimately, both loungewear and athleisure continue to be the most popular styles to shop. So this that sums it up that. Poshmark, you know, that, and that the trend report is very accurate. That's what's trending. And it's all stuff that we're going to be talking about. So mm -hmm. that yeah. is. So I thought one thing that was interesting about their um, popular versus trending, the popular brands in every category seem to be fairly stable. So that's an interesting thing to take away mm -hmm. if you're sourcing, you know, like Free yeah. People's one or Lululemon that are, you know, very much just bread and butter. Like you can always expect them mm -hmm. to do well on a platform, platform like Poshmark. But then the trending yeah, category. Yeah, for sure. So, so popular, they just took the the highest performing categories. Whereas trending, they looked at the data of change versus, I believe it was this time last year. Or was this time last quarter? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But so that's, you know, yeah. that's not consistent. That's the, the list is quite different. And you can see that in the impacts, like trending brands here, you have a lot of athleisure brands. Um, probably both in terms I'm of I'm surprised why wild, wild table that's a target brand well I think then that one is a newer brand so, so I think that might be why it's tr considered it's trending a newer one, but it's, it's also it's, it's a target brand though yes. so you know there's some lower end brands there yeah yeah um Ed Hardy so, I was a little that was the one that stood out to me yeah, as a surprise a thing <laughs> because yeah I, and I did see Depop uh had a push notification recently for a store that was uh featuring a lot of Ed Hardy so I guess that's something maybe it's coming again. back a little bit because it really died for a while yeah it was like interesting so and you can see a lot of yeah the the these are all staple brands that you know and and a lot of um so sums up what we're going to talk about so it's interesting that that directly shows um the impact of COVID you know and so this is funny. This artist actually, I just wanted to show you guys this. So this artist really summed it up in um, in her art there. So this oh. is hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, so if you, oh, I'm trying to zoom in, but I can't seem to do that. Sorry. <laughs> I can't move my phone here. Okay, so there you go. Those are super cute. Yeah, we'll definitely have that link for. I'll, I'll put the link in there. I don't know yeah. the other work from home bed. Yeah, <laughs> it's really shower, wet hair, huge chunk of hair sticking out. You know, like it, it's just funny that. Um, yeah, so I'll put that. I'll I'll definitely put that art uh, that this link in there. But it was just a, a really funny look at what you know what the work from home looks are and but you can see the same kind of thing you know with the cardigans and the, yeah, yeah yeah very comfy like yeah so but it's funny to see that in kind of like a almost like a caricature mm -hmm. form so. 
I'll put that link in the description as well. And oh, I don't know why it's it's slow for some reason. So Pinterest is a great place to check out too, to check out trends uh, from work from home fashion. And there's a whole like uh, so many pins on Pinterest for just that. So you can see leggings, scarves, cozy socks, you know, mules, like slippers, like kind of indoor, like indoor or outdoor kind of slippers, that kind of thing. So you can see um, if you if you go to Pinterest, that is another fantastic resource. What's that? Oh, the, the mules are great because you can slip them on and off so easily as opposed to like a lace that boot that takes more time. Like, yeah. All those I have things a, definitely I matter have when... But I have a pair of Skechers that are like indoor, outdoor. They're not quite slippers, but they're not quite shoes, you know, but they've got that fuzzy lining and I can wear them like if I need to go out to get the mail or, or you know, run outside with the dog or whatever. But they're also great for, you know, being around the house. So things like that are also, you know, definitely things that you want to look for. And, um, so I just wanted to go through. Um, so think so think about comfort and business casual mix. So with Zoom technology, a lot of people are opting for comfortable lounge or pajama pants or shorts paired with a button down shirt for men, a blazer, blazers for men too, or a card and a cardigan to throw over top. Jewelry accessories, I think, are trending more. People are accessorizing because again, waist mm -hmm. up and scarves and hair accessories. Scarves are a great way to cover up a t-shirt, to cover up, you know in a pinch, you know, so, and, and to look professional. So <clears throat> think also the login look, which is kind of like, you know, oversized comfort, a lot of neutral colors, plain colors, things like that. Uh, basics, a lot of basics, oversized fit, comfortable cotton, flannel, cashmere, cozy knits, fleece, you know, the, that those kind of fabrics, not necessarily the polyester and you know, and remember the waist up is all you really need to do to dress for technology. So what's selling? So shirt dresses like this and oversized loose fitting dresses. So there's an example of, of, of something like that. And, you know, there's a, a caftan, a caftan dress, you know, so things like that are selling, you know, just comfortable dresses for women that are kind of oversized and roomy. So definitely look for those. And the, a cardigan is a huge um oh so you had a comment about caftans yeah so i noticed just this is sort of anecdotally but a trend within social media and people i both know and people i follow who are more like influencers that the item that seemed to shift the most in terms of what people were talking about buying was caftans Okay, and, interesting. And I did do a little bit of digging. And so back in April, Vogue had a um, an article that featured captains as like the work from home wardrobe. Oh. And then there was also an article on the Lily, which is uh, part of the Washington Post about the rise of the captain. And it did say that um, sales of Notori captains and Notori is a brand that's definitely one to look out for. Um, they were up 92% since mid-March. 92%. Interesting. So I can pull that up. And so I'll, 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 add, I'll add the link. Okay, yeah, because I was trying. It, is, it is an interesting article. Um, yeah, well, we'll have to pull about, that up. You know, like one specific piece of clothing. So caftan is both, you know, a, a, a good keyword to use if you have the appropriate garment to use it for, mm -hmm. but also something to look out for. And I think it's yeah. hard to... Um, I mean, to, to say like the dividing line between a dress and a caftan always, but when you're looking at the the very roomy oversize and generally also uh, natural fibers, so linen, silk, cotton, as opposed to the you know polyester garments, I think people are moving away from because that's what you wore to look more professional and you didn't want to spend yeah, yeah. all the money on a silk dress for the office, but now it's your wardrobe's more fluid. So it's easier to yeah. think about spending that money on natural fibers. I've definitely noticed people m moving towards that as well. Yes, for sure. So that's great. And, and we'll put that link to that article in mm -hmm. the description. So cashmere is another thing. So, but, but duster cardigans and cardigans and like, you know, oversized cardigans are a big thing too. So look for those. This, I, it's, 
sold for one ninety nine ninety nine. So you know, I mean, it, this is cashmere, so it's going to sell for more. But but you know, look for these. Definitely now is the time to be listing them. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. And then here's another example. This this is a Gap cable uh, cardigan that went for ninety five dollars. You know, it's just Gap, and that is the perfect quintessential work from home cardigan. You know. Yeah, I will say as as a knitter, so <laughs> from that perspective of my expertise, it is very expensive just the materials to make a, a sweater, like a long duster, duster type sweater mm -hmm. like that. So even when you're looking at a lower end or like a bread and butter level brands like Gap, yeah. if you're buying this new from the store, it's not going to be necessarily super cheap just because the materials are still expensive for the manufacturer. So, and especially when you're talking about cashmere, cashmere blends. So in the past, I've always had good luck with longer um, sweaters, you know, regardless of the season, regardless of the extenuating circumstances. And I can only imagine that this fall into winter, they will be even more in demand. So definitely something to look out uh, for. This is interesting. Can you see the fiber content there? Oh yeah. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> it's like a heck kitchen, of a blend. Kitchen yeah. sink blend is what I would yeah. call it. Yeah. So, but you know, that is something that, you know, that sold for 95 and it was Gap. Mm -hmm. So, so definitely look for those right now. Now is the time to list them, especially as we're getting into fall and winter. So get those listed if you have, and look for them in the thrift stores or if you're, if you're uh, sourcing online something to definitely look for. And then also blazers, basic blazers are something that it, it is, they are still selling because people like I did today, you know, they have their t-shirt on, they want to just throw it on and look professional for a, a zoom meeting, you know, that's, so this, this is only, you know, 1999, but um, you know, it's just a great example of just a basic black, you know, just, just, yep. you know, neutral color blazer. So, you know, definitely look for those and lounge pants, and um, lounge pants, pajama pants, and joggers are also something to look for. You know, something like my mannequins wearing. These sold for $40 on Poshmark. They're Trina Turk lounge pants. So, and that's a brand that I haven't been picking up as much anymore. But, yeah, me too, but it shows that the style is definitely, mm -hmm. you know, a good motivating factor. Definitely. And also, we have, um, so, you know, short, like bikes, bicycle shorts, like kind of like that, but mm -hmm. also leggings and yoga pants, yoga shorts, athleisure items, you know, anything like that. So think Lululemon, you know, uh, Athleta, all of those brands. And yeah. And I think that reflects both the, um, just wearing athleisure on a regular basis, but also that people are doing workouts from home and people are getting into fitness. You yeah, know, when they felt like they didn't have time before and now they don't commute. And yeah. there are all these new services where you can just stream yeah. workouts. So there's definitely an interest in just, you know. Yeah, and a lot of like our gyms are still closed here. Yeah, and a lot of people, even when the gyms are opening, they're not at full capacity. So not everyone can get in or um, people are still afraid to go, you know, because they don't feel safe. Right. But, so, but people are still working out even so. Absolutely. So, yeah. So that's a great. And people are, I think people are outside walking more too. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. So that's athleisure, you know, definitely look for those items. Now, as far as um, um, bras, bralettes are popular. Um, and even like some of the bralettes go up higher and, the, you know, you can show a little bit of lace mm -hmm. under a blazer or a cardigan. But also sports bras are are trending too. So I think people, instead of wearing the, the, you know, for us women, you know, the underwire stiff bra, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah, because you would need that in the office, but when you're home, you don't want the underwire and the, you know, the, you want a comfy, cozy sports bra or a bralette like that. So those are definitely look, I mean, bras sell all day, all year, but specifically those types right now are selling. And these are Things that you could find in the bins, you know, like Victoria's Secret, mm -hmm. um, you know, bralettes. And this was a, a lot of two, but they sold for 28 and I bet they paid, you know, like a couple dollars each, you know. So that's definitely yeah. something to look for. And then robes. This is the fleece robe. This is a Vera Bradley robe. This sold for $60. So that's another thing that's trending. A lot of um, robes are definitely 
um, you know, people can throw them on their morning coffee, get to work. And yeah. And this, that looks like it's a holiday robe. I was thinking too, that with, um, when the holidays come around and people aren't doing their fancy holiday parties this year, as they normally do, I bet holiday PJs and like cozy holiday themed clothing is going to be even more popular than ever because that's what people are going to wear to dress up, you know, just at home with their kids and, uh, or their families, as opposed to seeing friends, like, you know, like we normally do. So, yeah, for sure. So this is another thing that jumpsuits and rompers are, and especially like cozy, comfy, you know, mm -hmm. jumpsuits like this. That very so cute. I want it. I, I know. It's it adorable. Line. It is so cute. So I just got a, I just got a jumper, a jumpsuit that is actually my size in um one of the sourcing box i haven't tried it on yet so if it doesn't fit i'll sell it but um you know i'm i'm really excited about that so and i'll, I'll probably show that in our haul next week but uh that these are something that are selling you know like crazy right now and there's another example this is a little bit dressier but this is one from anthro and it is yeah um so Jason asks, where's the tank tops? Which tank tops are trending too. That is definitely basic tanks. Think think basic tanks in, you know, just basic colors there. And a lot of people I've noticed a lot of them are going in lots. So if you have a few, lot them together the same size. Yeah, that's exactly. Okay, what so yeah. After, so. And then, hmm? exactly, they're, they're great for underneath a cardigan or, you know, great, they're definitely, the tank tops are definitely, and then, is Victoria's Secret going out of business? I don't know. Is it? Did you hear? I haven't heard of it. That? I haven't heard that. It's totally possible. I missed it. Um, but if yeah. anyone else knows, and, and we will have to double check that afterwards. Yeah, for sure. So also sneakers, slippers, and comfort shoes. So th this is kind of a good example of something that you could wear to run out to get the mail or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, they're Uggs. These are Uggs. They sold for $69. They were pre-owned. And they are, you know, like their shearling line, their suede, you know, they've got a rubber bottom so you can walk outside in them if you need to. So, so, so kind of comfy slipper kind of shoes like that and slippers and, you know, kind of athletic kind of slip on and mules are another thing that's mules are definitely so yeah, look, those have been in the past few years as a style and now they seem even extra functional. So that's something you may also yeah. see in the thrift store just because they've been in for a few years now. So. Yeah. So definitely look for those type of shoes and even sneakers. I noticed athletic shoes are on the rise too. So, and then um, <clears throat> this was an interesting, um, this, this shows some things that are trending. This is a, this was a, uh, an article from Forbes and we'll put the link in there and of this too, but this shows a lot of basic colors again, you know, Mm -hmm. basics yeah. wardrobe we're talking about the little the black dress comfortable cozy there's you know like jogging kind of um athleisure and you know outfits like that and again like it's very very um back to basics you know mm -hmm. like the minimalist style that's been in for yeah um, the last few years now is really taking center stage because mm -hmm. it's it's so functional for the current yeah. They talk about overalls and jumpsuits here. That's um, and and oversized dresses, like we were talking about, flowy and lounge, loose fitting dresses. Uh, you can just see that it's it's all the kind of stuff that you know, sporty shorts and joggers. Um, the tank. That's another. Which and there you go, Jason. Yeah, there you go, Jason. So yeah, the tank top is definitely something that you want to look for. Tank and um. So you can see that, you know, some of the, some of the things are, and we talked about a lot of those. So, so it's definitely, um, all trending and this show. So that I wanted to touch, we wanted to touch on men's fashion a little too, cause we don't want to just talk about women's fashion. So, I mean, it is our, our more area of expertise, but we are all inclusive on this show. So. Exactly. So this is from men's health magazine. This is, um, and it's talking about, you know, work from home, um, from comfy hoodies to cozy sweatpants. Um, and you know, it's saying that our, 
nine to five trousers are collecting dust in our closets and our old tattered sweatpants become the ideal cho choice for conference calls. So yeah, business casual taken to the next level. So hoodies. Um, somebody's at my door. I don't know. Can you hold on one second? Um, yeah. I don't know why somebody would be at my door right now unless it's like a delivery. Um, sorry. Okay. Uh, I will try to hold down the fort for a second. And um, unfortunately, Nay was the one who was ready to talk all about men's work from home fashion. Um, but I guess I'm just going back to some of the, the studies I did. It, it is interesting to see that the people who are already more into shopping online are the ones who are sort of redirecting all of their practices to shopping online. So I do think that there's going to be a segment that um, not included in that, and that is like older buyers. And so it's interesting to think about how that might impact what we're sourcing. So, you know, does it mean that we look very much more for in style? Uh, you know, do, does it matter more that we follow the, the latest fashion as opposed to more bread and butter items that people may still be happy to shop in traditional retail for. But as Heather pointed out in the chat, there are a lot of companies that are completely going out of business. So in a few years, there may just be fewer opportunities to shop in person anyway. And it doesn't matter what demographic you're about. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. So my son's teacher, his new teacher, his second grade That's teacher so cute. came to drop off something for him they're going to be doing it's all online so yeah. unfortunately he's not here to meet her but i didn't i didn't realize she was going to pop by and drop off uh for my son so how sweet so that was who was at the door i'm glad i answered it uh, sorry about that so um yeah classic t-shirt long sleeve shirts you can see athletic shoes asic uh joggers there henley shirts so these are all things that are trending for Men, you can see, you know, mm -hmm. hoodie, and you can see a lot of the same kind of things, basic colors, you know, like these are basic black loungy kind of pants, pajamas, you know, so kind of the same Lululemon uh, pullover hoodie, um, you know, and I, I did notice a lot of like wool socks and like um, not fuzzy socks, comfortable socks, mm -hmm. socks are, are a big thing right now. So, um yeah, so it, it's interesting though. Uh, we'll put this link in there too. But it's the same kind of thing that you see for the women. Look at those fuzzy slippers with the shearling lining there, you know, moccasin slippers. Um, just play, and it's a lot of basics. So um, cat, hats and caps are, are trending more. Um, you know, it's it's just, um, and, and even cardigans for men. Yeah, you know, the hats and caps goes hand in hand with the accessories and just like different ways to express your yeah. personality and who you are. Yep. You know, like what teams or brands you yep. like, things like that. Yeah. And here is an example of a blanket. So what we were talking about, there's a Mexican blanket and um, the quote says, I've always been resistant to working while sitting on the couch and I recently changed my ways. Now I write while I'm wrapped up in this blanket. It's soft. It makes working from home so much cozier. So yeah, so we were talking about blankets. So there's an example. And changing and your some, space to work more yeah. for your own productivity. Yeah. Here's some recent men's sales. Uh, this is a rag and bone Henley shirt. Like we were talking about the Henleys. And this was, this went for $25. Uh, this is... Uh, just cargo pants, comfortable, you know, um, and they, uh, these are convertible so they can go, you know, mm -hmm. go into shorts. So things like that, um, you know, and you're talking about basic khakis, button down shirts are big. I mean, I think men are working in their boxers with the button down shirt and nobody knows, you know, it's, um, yeah. So, um, here's a pair these kind of shoes, like the comfort kind of slip on shoes for men. Mm -hmm. So that's all that is, um, and then this is all this this article talks about behavioral trends that will reshape the post COVID world. So we'll put a link to this article as well. Um, did you? Yeah, this one it? talked a lot more about like grocery shopping things like that, but it did also touch a bit on um, <clears throat> like retail purchases and 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 how things that we're doing now will you know persist after 
the world has returned somewhat to normal. So um, a few, you know. And then did, oh, sorry. the other items too, did you want to talk about those? Yeah, too? so a few other things that you know, sort of beyond the scope of our episode today, but definitely seem like categories of items to be looking for and, and that people are looking for online are um, like office supplies and office furniture. So, you know, not that we're really necessarily into furniture selling, but who knows if you do it locally on Facebook Marketplace or something. And then also, you know, decor so items that, you know, you can put in the background of your Zoom or just to make your own home office feel a little bit more professional and put together. Items that can help you entertain at home. So like projectors and TVs, things like that. Um, outdoor space items, <clears throat> grills or tiki torches, you know, everything kind of in under that umbrella. And um, probably more, like related to office supplies is homeschooling supplies. So nay, like your kids. <laughs> yes, 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 I have to get an next In fact, mm -hmm. I have a school supply list and yeah. I wish that I could find some of those things in a thrift store right now, but you know, I'm not going through. Right, them. right. But you know, if you're, if you're looking online, a big lot of crayons and markers or something might be something that appeals to you, appeals to other parents who are just yeah. trying to quickly get everything they need to get <laughs> going. I mean, that this may have been more, relevant a couple of weeks ago, you know, since schools are already getting back in swing, but I think that'll still be, you know, enough to, to push it. Yeah. And then uh, people are cooking at home more. So they're being more adventurous. They're trying new recipes. They're wanting to try a new gadget or they just need to outfit their kitchen in ways that they never did before. I mean, this is definitely true. Like from my experience in the city, you, it's, pretty much the same cost to just order in all of your all of your meals as it is to grocery shop with the huge high cost of living plus owning all of the the spices and pots and pans and stuff and so there's a lot of people who just don't even have all of that and now they're not going out as much and they're realizing all the things that they need yeah. so yeah. those are also items and this this article talks a little bit more about that too like the, the trend towards home cooking and yeah um cookbooks uh jason Secret Beach talks about um, mm -hmm. yeah. there was a webinar about cookbooks and I cannot believe some of the sold. We had a member of the Secret Beach who just sold a cookbook for like two hundred dollars. So definitely keep your eyes out for you know certain. Some don't sell as well, but you know, and now is the time that people are buying them. Yeah, totally. And so, sorry, the quote from this article I wanted to share was that fifty. 54% of Americans are cooking more now than they were before the pandemic and 35% say they enjoy cooking more now than ever. So that definitely is affecting, you know, like gourmet ingredient grocery sales. But I think for our purposes, it's also affecting the home kitchen items that you might be looking for on eBay or, you know, the, the air fryers and things like that. So yeah, kitchen appliances. That's yeah. another thing, that, you know, that, that, um, that Jason had talked about too um, in his group that, you know, definitely uh, home appliances, uh, kitchen appliances are, are definitely selling more too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's definitely out of my wheelhouse. I don't know if I'd feel comfortable reselling those, but hey, you know, yeah. I've sold a couple of um, else's. I've sold a couple of them and they, they, I sold, you know what I sold is um, a space maker, vintage space maker. My parents had it in their attic. They had never used it. It was in the box from the eighties and it sold oh, for, that, yeah. it sold to a prop company for like 300 bucks. That was a couple years ago, but you know, you know, you know, things are at the thrift store. So, yeah, um, yeah, so. and then, um, so do you have any other comments on our, no, that's, that's all I've got. And uh, if anyone has questions or comments in the chat, love to hear them and we'll, we'll move on to our end segments, but um, you know, we can yeah. double back. So and talk about the other says that her son, her son so we think he took a picture of the room well. when it was like all nice and clean and neat and stuff. And then uses that as his background. I've definitely heard people doing that before. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's funny. So And we're so May. I think you have some scores to share for our weekly market report. Yes. Um, yeah. So my first one is, and this again is thanks to Jason because I I never bought this before. 
Um, so I sell and I paid a dollar for this soundtrack and I sold it for $11 plus shipping, not a big sale, but Hey, you know, I turned a dollar into 11, you know, that's not bad. That was, and so easy to ship cheap to ship, you know, it just goes in a, in a padded mailer and off it goes. So, um, that was a, you know, that was a good little sale there. And puzzles. I have, so this, yeah, so this is something that we're talking about. This is another kind of pandemic thing. You know, a lot of people are doing puzzles. So my kids had these four puzzles. I don't, I think my mom might have bought them for them like years ago. We have so many puzzles. So, um, so I said I paid zero because I don't even remember like when we bought them or, you know, mm -hmm. um, and the kids did them. They were the kids. And they don't really like to do their, the puzzles more than once, you know, so they were, were cleaning out and they said, you know, we don't want these anymore. We did them already. But 300 piece puzzles don't sell too well individually, but I lotted them up in a lot of four and they paid $24.99 plus shipping. So um, and it was a, such a fast, quick and easy sale. I listed them and like the next day they sold. So that's great. And I was just glad. Yeah. Jason has a great point. Do that 10 times a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. And it adds up. Yes. With the CDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, yes. Yes, definitely. So, um, I, I have to thank him for my CD sales and that that's definitely something that, you know, I, I, I'm trying to push myself to list more diverse items too, mm -hmm. you know, and not just yeah, and as, as we were putting together this episode, I was also thinking about how many people might be trying to start reselling for the first time now as well as part of this, yeah, you know, this whole change in, our society and um, items like that, that are so low cost of entry. It's a great way. You know, it's one of those items that you can start with relatively low risk. And, and if they sell and you do it in volume, you're doing great. And if they don't sell, you know, a dollar here and there is not that hard to swallow in terms of the cost of education. So. Yeah, yeah for sure. And this is a, this is a forever 21 item that I was talking about. So I got this in a 10 for 10 Goodwill blue box, meaning 10 items mm. for $10 plus shipping. The whole thing shipped is $14.99. So I guess, you know, with shipping, I paid a little, little over a dollar, but you know, roughly. Okay. And I sold it for 15, but it was forever 21. It was super duper tiny. I mean, like X, it was a size small, but I put the, the measurements and it fit, fit more like an extra small. So yeah. And it was, but it was that ribbed kind of, um, it was actually a poly blend, I think a poly cotton blend, but it was that ribbed kind of uh, stretch, you know, from the nineties. And it was actually late nineties, uh, forever 21 was around then. And the tag, the way I could tell it was, it was made in USA and it had one of those papery printed tags on yeah, it. Yeah. And so, you know, I could tell that it was older and it had that nineties, uh, ribbed kind of fabric. Um, it was, it's, it's, it's back in, you know, it's trendy among, especially among the, the younger crowd that, so I knew that if I put it on eBay or Mercari or Poshmark, it probably wouldn't have sold for too much or, but it sold fast. I listed it. I put it yeah. on Depop. And I listed it as 90s, vintage 90s, you know, and, and, uh, you know, ribbed, you know, so I knew that if I put it on Depop, not only are there smaller, trendier buyers, but I knew that somebody was going to, um, you know, buy it for its vintage 90s appeal. So I put it on Depop and I sold it for 15 bucks. So that was, and it was, it would have been like a kind of a, it was kind of like a dud, like low end item from the box. So and that covered your whole box. So that's awesome. And, and you know, what's funny is I have, yeah, exactly. I have a vintage dress from the sixties that reminds me of this dress. It has the collar, it's ribbed, it's the same length. I think it has buttons down the front and it's, it definitely mm -hmm. is from the sixties and it looks like a mini dress from the sixties, but it's interesting how you see those echoes of the style. And I do, yeah, maybe yeah. I can get it up on Depop because it has that, some of that 95. Yeah. 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 So definitely, you know, so forever 21, there are exceptions, you know, usually it's kind of a bread and butter, cheap bread and butter, you know, maybe something that people bundle in and posh, but um, you know, but I, this was this was kind of an exception to the rule. I mean, it wasn't a big sale, but still for Forever 21, decent. Yeah, and, and it's always so fun just to find those older items. It's like, wow, they really still made them in the U.S. I think, and, and, yeah. 
Yeah, I have oh, one. Maybe Forever One, Forever Twenty One, still has some factories in the U.S., but I'm sure most of it's overseas now. And I think they're going out of business too. No, oh, yeah, that, that that too. They filed for bankruptcy. Vince, I think they're closing all of their stores. This yeah, is so I this I just shipped out today. In fact, I just got a notification. If you heard a ding on my computer, <laughs> that that the tracking showed up on Poshmark. Oh, so awesome. this was a Vince cashmere sweater. Again, perfect work from home. Mm -hmm. And it was a long kind of tunic. It was a size small and it was, you know, really, it was pretty tiny. So it, but it sold for, I paid $3 for it and it sold for $27 plus shipping. Oh, so God. I will say that I think Vince has definitely gone down in terms of yeah. price point. Yeah. Yes. I do still love it. It's always nice basics and, um, yeah, mm -hmm. and that I took her off her. I probably could have gotten a little more, but it had sat for a while, so mm -hmm. it was it was time to let it go. Oh. Okay, so um, just a little bit of news that um, you noticed this new feature on on Poshmark, which I actually think was kind of disappointing mm -hmm. to me. They introduced this yeah, new feature yeah, where you, sure. can, you can list items before you get the. Uh, Lola's dropping out. Okay. Oh no. Okay. You you oh. talk. Yeah, you're kind of dropping out, like in and out. I don't know what's going on, but do you so, want to take over? Yeah. Well, I can hear you now, so we'll try. Okay. okay. Um. So this is a feature where you can pre-list items that we don't have actually in hand yet. So. Basically, if you're ordering items from China, which a lot of the sellers who do like the boutique items, that's, you know, they're, they're ordering them from like AliExpress or um, Alibaba and those types yeah, of things. Like, yeah. yeah. And once you've ordered them, but they're still in transit, they can take, you know, eight weeks to arrive. And a lot of people, and I'm sure if you're, if you're browsing on Poshmark ever, you'll see listings like this where it'll be like coming soon. And so now Poshmark has actually built that in as a feature into the app. Yeah. So my, I mean, it, it's interesting because they're definitely listening to what the buy or what the sellers want in terms of features, which is great, but I am not thrilled about the encouragement of more, um, you know, new from China, like boutique mass produced items as opposed to the resale side, which is mm -hmm. sort of why I love Poshmark, you know, as a seller, but also as a buyer that I'm looking for items that are having a smaller carbon footprint that are, you know, and they may have been made in China originally, but, you know, they're, they're being resold and I'm giving them an extra life. So I hope that's not a huge pivot for Poshmark that this isn't a sign for thing, of things to come. But, you know, if it is a sign that they are listening to what sellers are wanting in features, and that's good. And so we'll see how this plays out. Yes. And Anything do you have the article? Oh, um, no. The, the, po the post office? Yeah, I have that article. I can pull it up here. Yeah. So... So yeah, so the post office, this is a, a continuing post office saga. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. Of, of what's going on. Yeah, so there's been some more. Yeah, so, yeah they paid, yeah, so the post, they paid um, his former company 200. So it looks like there there's a lot of conflicts of interest there here and mm -hmm. some, you know, shady stuff that's happened in the past. So I don't know, you know, it, it's kind of, I, I've noticed um, personally, I've had issues with my packages lately. Mm -hmm. I've had to contact my buyers. I do say, I do, um, I will say that if you stay on top of it with buyers, they are very nice. And a lot of them are very understanding, um, you know, but I've noticed tracking is taking longer to show up. Things are taking longer to get there. I will never send anything media mail again during this pandemic or during the postal service issues because, um, I have a media mail package that I sent out like a month ago. It was books, you know, a, a lot mm -hmm. of books and they still haven't arrived. So my buyer is very understanding, but yeah, I do not recommend right. media mail right now. Um, so I've had, you know, I've definitely had some issues. It's um, I have one I, and, and things have been going like oddly to, I have one item that's um, 
it went to a hub in a totally different area. Like, I don't know why it went there, but it's taking the scenic route. So things like that are happening. Yeah, so. I had a piece of mail that was sent from my doctor, which is literally a five minute walk away from me. It's like right down the street. For some reason, it went to the sorting center in Hartford and then came back to me. Oh, so, you know, Hartford's not too far away, but I don't think that's a normal, uh, you know, that that's definitely no. so, the post office having to consolidate their sorting areas. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're keeping an eye on this and, you know, if, if anyone watching this has their own experiences with the post office and, and wants to share kind of what they're doing, how they're handling it with their customers and, and what that experience has been like, definitely I'm curious to hear, uh, you know, all of your experiences as well. So leave a comment and then tell us, tell us how it's going for you. Yeah, definitely. And, and we have our usual question as well, at the end of our episode yes. is so what sort of work from home fashion items have you been so yes yeah, so work from home. yeah. And, and so if you have um sold or thrifted anything mm -hmm. um sorry if you if you notice that there's anything that um you know that you're that you've seen trending more your sales let us know you know for because of because of work from home you know the everything that's the shift towards work working from home so oh totally. yeah know. an old item in your inventory that's suddenly yeah. getting more likes and traction stuff like that definitely interesting to pay attention to that stuff too yes and next week again we will be back with our online sourced thrift haul so um, definitely, you know, so that. tune into that next week. Yes. And, and as always, we do you do have some exciting. Sorry. Trying to. As always, you can there. find us all over the internet. Sorry, guys. I think both of our internets are not doing so hot right now. Um, no, I don't know what's going on. It's so weird. So that's a bummer. I'll try to get that fixed for next week. But in the meantime, we have a bunch of videos in our back catalog that you can watch. Uh, I think interesting, if you're interested in this topic, you know, back at the beginning of the pandemic, we did some sort of like pandemic item thrifting mm -hmm. episodes where we talked about what we expected to be more in demand. I think we were pretty on, on the spot with that. So, um, you know, that might also be interesting to you. If, if you're new to this channel since March, um, but we're also on Instagram and on different reselling platforms like Poshmark, Depop, and eBay. And you can always email us at nalothrifts at gmail.com. Yes. Love to hear from you. And please like and subscribe and leave a comment with any of your thoughts on anything in this episode. Uh, we, we always love to hear your thoughts and opinions. So, yes. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next week. And thanks for tuning in. Bye.